Hey, it's Matt Morris. Welcome back to lesson number four in our five-day series on how to go from amateur to pro and network marketing. And I hope you've gotten a ton of value over the last three days. We're almost done, so let's hop into it. Today, we're gonna talk about closing. And over the years, I've had people say, Matt, why don't you call it something like enrolling or call it opening <laughs> because closing is kind of harsh and salesy. And you know what? Here's my thoughts on this. Stop being a pansy. If you don't like the word closing, it probably means that you're a really bad closer. So get over it. Now listen, I'll tell you the number one reason that will hold you back from being a masterful closer. It's your specific mindset as it relates to closing. Now, I'm gonna cover that in just a couple minutes, but before we get into that, you have to know that the closing process, it doesn't start when the presentation is over. The closing process, it actually starts way before that. In fact, the closing process actually starts with the invite. The invite is arguably the single most important skill in network marketing. And we don't have time to get into all the elements of a successful invite. I go through the art and the science of the invite in a ton of detail in my Millionaire Score School program, but for now, just know that your invite should not be a sales presentation. Your invite should be just enough information to get them to sit down with you to see a full presentation. So I always say the number one thing that we're selling, it's an hour of their time. So the next part of the closing process, it's actually before the presentation as well, and this is the setup, or it's the pre-presentation. So I'm gonna give you a three-step setup that will increase your closing percentages when you use it correctly. So I want you to write these three things down. So number one is to share your why, okay? Number two, it's a big deal and you are all in, okay? And then number three, doesn't matter, okay? Number one, number two, and number three. So I'm gonna break down the psychology behind this, okay? Step one is to share your why. So let them know what it was that got you to be open-minded and not only look at something different other than your regular career, but what actually got you to join. Now, the key here is authenticity. Authentically, from your heart, let them know what your why is, okay? Step number two, let them know it is a big deal, that you're all in. See, people follow strength, not weakness. If they think even for a second that you're just trying it out, they will not join because no one wants to work with someone who's wishy-washy about success. And then step three is let them know that it doesn't matter to you whether they do it or not. Now, this is where you're gonna assert your posture. So without, without being arrogant or rude, but you wanna get across to them that you're doing them a favor and they're not doing you a favor by looking at your company. So I'll give you an example of what my setup might look like. So I'm sitting down with my prospect, let's call him John. I say, John, hey man, appreciate you sitting down with me. As you know, over the last few years, um, have had some pretty good success with my company. The challenge is, I've been stuck in the office 50, 60, 70 hours a week, um, just stressed out, burned out. Um, Rhonda just gave birth to Zara almost a year ago. She's sending me you know, pictures of her doing all this cute stuff. A lot of times when I get home, I get home, she's already asleep. And you know, I just wanna be able to see my children grow up vertically, not just horizontally. And so I've been open to something else and I gotta tell you, man, I have found it. This is the biggest thing I've ever seen in my life. I am all in. Now listen, doesn't matter to me. If you love it, that's great. If you don't love it, that's great. But there's anyone, if there's anyone that I wanna be in partnership with, it's you, cool? Okay, so um, you kind of get the feeling, right? I was very authentic. I shared my why, brought my kid, you know, my child into the picture. Um, let them know it's big. I'm all in. It's the biggest thing I've ever seen. If you love it, great. If you don't love it, great. Either way. So I'm basically letting their guard down. Either way is totally fine. So then after that, there's uh, step four. <laughs> step four is optional. And this is what I would suggest you do right before you show your presentation if you're using a video. So if you're about to show a DVD or something like that, then what I do is I'd say, John, I want you to pay attention to what I have to do to explain this to you. Hit play on the video. So what happens when you say that is they get that you're not doing any explaining at all, right? You're letting the video do all the explaining and all the selling for you. 
So when the video is over, we can talk a little bit about the psychology of closing. Now, realize the primary motivator that causes people to take action, it's emotion. Okay? People also buy on logic, but the primary motivator is emotion and then they back it up with logic. So understanding that psychology, we want to be more emotional than logical. And this is where the majority of network marketers, they blow out their prospects because of their language after the presentation. So the most common thing network marketers say after a presentation is, so what did you think? which is the last thing that you want to ask. See, when you ask, what did you think? You're accessing the logical side and the analytical side of their brain, which is not the primary buying side of the brain. And I'm telling you this right now, even though you know this, <laughs> you'll still have a hard time not asking this question because it's the easiest thing to say and the most non-confrontive. You see, the number one fear, number one fear in the world is the fear of rejection. So if you ask people what they think, that's not asking for a decision. So it kind of uh, lets you avoid the possibility of them saying no and you being rejected. So this is one of the reasons why most network marketers, they're terrible closers is because the fear of rejection. So they ask, what did you think? And then once the prospect tells them that, you know, what they think, then they start reselling the deal to their prospects on all the other reasons and the benefits of joining, the selling points, and they never actually get around to asking someone to join. So listen, the number one reason why people don't get started, it's not because of a lack of money, it's not a lack of time or any of the common objections, it's actually because they're never even asked to join. And the uncomfortableness of asking someone to join, it's also the main reason why most network marketers want to continue selling and want to continue explaining long after the presentation is over. And I know you think you might be thinking, you know, you're going to get them more excited by explaining even more when the presentation is over. But listen, the exact opposite is true. Tune into the psychology here. You're actually less likely to enroll someone when you do that because going back to the number one question they have is, can I do it? You're being a salesperson. And the more you sell, the more they think they have to sell. And remember, 95% of the people in the world hate to sell. They'd rather eat worms than have to be a salesperson. So they need to understand that enrolling other people, it is a simple process. And when you have to sell, 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 they think they will have to sell, sell, sell. And since they don't want to sell, 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 they don't join. So when the presentation is over, your job is not to sell, it's to collect a decision. Now, if they have questions, if they have concerns or objection, then you're going to explain more to help move them to a decision. But listen, don't overcomplicate the process. Now, I'm going to give you a few keys here to the closing process that this is what helped me become a really good closer. So number one is my number one rule with just about everything that I do, and that is to have fun. Have fun, okay? So this should be a fun business. Some people, they just take everything too seriously, lighten up a little bit. And what happens is when you're always having fun, that's attractive to other people. When you're Mr. Mysterious all the time, it's like nose to the grindstone, that's not a lifestyle that people are really attracted to. So listen, have fun, smile. It makes people like you more when you're smiling, when you're having fun. So number one is to have fun with the prospect. Um, number two is to posture up, okay? Realize that they need you more than you need them. You are the president and CEO of your own multi-million dollar business. There is no one person that's gonna make or break your success. You're gonna be successful with or without any one person. So posture up, realize that you have the deal, okay? Number three is to be excited. Okay, now I'm getting a little excited in the process here. So be excited. See, that's what moves people. There's a great book called Primal Leadership by Daniel Goleman. And it talks about, you know, what leaders have the ability to do is transfer emotion to other people. And so if you want to have that ability to transfer emotion, then let your emotion out. Be excited. Be genuinely excited. I'm not saying be hyped up. You know, on a scale of 1 to 10, don't be a 20. 
But what happens is most people, they tend to be, you know, a little nervous about the process and you want to be cool. You know, a lot of people have that ITC disease, you know, I'm too cool. So listen, no, be excited and that's going to help move other people. So people will dance to your music. If you're excited, they're way more likely to be excited. Now, number four is critical in the process. Zero emotional attachment. Zero emotional attachment. Um, you can't worry about what someone's going to say. If you're always worried about someone saying no, they're more likely to say no. Now, write this down. This will be something you can use with you with you know, your career forever in network marketing. When you stop being afraid of people saying no, they actually start saying yes. Okay. Now, <laughs> number five, this was a big one for me, is convince yourself that you love to close, okay? Because here's what I did forever, it seemed like, is I hated the closing process because I hated rejection. You know, it's why I, uh, I think I had, you know, one, <laughs> one girlfriend all through high school. It was like, I just couldn't bring myself to, um, you know, ask a girl out because I was afraid of rejection. And so what happened was I got into network marketing and I was afraid of rejection and I just, started telling myself, oh man, I'm so nervous. So when the presentation's over, I started getting really nervous. It was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, what are they gonna say, you know, what if they tell me I'm crazy? And so, you know, what I started doing is I started saying, you know what, I, uh, this is really hurting me. Uh, I'm really not having a lot of success. I need to change my thinking. Remember, it's all an inner game. Success in network marketing is all an inner game. It's not about the tactics. So here's what I started doing is I started telling myself I love to close. Now, when you love to do something, are you more likely to do it? Yes. Um, when you love to do something, are you gonna be excited about doing it? Yes, are you gonna be better at it? Yes, if you love it. You're gonna get better and better and better at it if you love it, yes. So start telling yourself you love to close. And here's one of the things that I did is when it came towards the end of the presentation, I would still feel the nervousness and listen, you know, you, you gotta have kind of courage in this case. So courage is not the absence of fear. You're still gonna have the fear. It's okay to still have the fear, but courage is feeling the fear and doing it anyway. And so what I would start to do towards the end of the presentation, I'd start saying, I'm excited, I'm excited, I'm excited, I'm excited, I'm excited, I'm excited, over and over and over. And I'd say, oh, I love this, I love to close, I love to close, I love to close, I love to close. See, what I was doing is I'm programming myself to love to close. See, what you say and what you think about yourself is what creates your belief system. And what's happened is over the years of doing that so many times, now genuinely, I love the closing process. I absolutely love it. I'm excited about it and I'm not tied to the outcome. I'm gonna have fun with it. I love to close. So tell yourself you love to close. Now, number six is another big one, is assume, assume the sale. Assume that they're gonna enroll. Um, you know, when they, when you just naturally have an attitude, like, of course they're going to enroll and that's your body language, that's your attitude. Do you think they're more likely to enroll? Obviously they're way more likely to enroll if you have that assumptive mindset. You know, here's something that I used to do actually is, you know, I'd have a paper application form when I'd sit down with people and it's amazing to me. So many people go and they present their opportunity or their products and they don't even bring a way to enroll someone. They don't bring a way to actually, you know, finalize the sale. They don't even have an application with them. They don't have, uh, you know, anything with, uh, you know, computer access to sign them up. So obviously have an application ready, have something, you know, because if you're assuming they're gonna enroll, you better be ready to enroll them right then. And what I used to do is I'd actually get the uh, paper application form and I'd fill in all of the information that I knew about them. So I'd put in their name, their phone number, their email address, their address if I knew it, everything I could, you know, except for the credit card. And so it was fascinating is, you know, when I started becoming a good closer, you know, presentation's over, I'm like, okay, awesome. And I'm bringing out the application form. It's already partially filled out. And I can't tell you how many times people actually said to me, am I doing this? And I said, yeah, man, welcome to the team. And they just naturally go and fill it out or I fill it out for them. And so assume the sale. Now, I'm gonna give you a few of my favorite closing lines that I've used for years to enroll literally one-on-one -on -one or two-on-one, -on -one, I've enrolled thousands of people, either for myself or other members on my team. And 
they're almost all based on my philosophy. Now, my philosophy is this, to close early and close often, meaning you're not gonna start reselling when the presentation's over. You're gonna get right into collecting a decision. Now, my number one favorite, which I don't typically use this on a one-on-one -on -one or two-on-one, it's a little bit too much energy. Uh, this is the one that I typically use if we're at, say, a live event, where maybe the energy is really high. And uh, now this is super sophisticated, so you may wanna write this down. So presentation's over, if we're in a room, people are you know, clapping. As Soon as it's over, I turn to my prospect and I say, you're in, right? And I give him a high five. You're in, right? And I give him a high five, you got it? So two head nod, <laughs> high five. Or you can do the handshake, okay? Now, if we break down the psychology of this, number one, you're having fun, you're emotional. So when you're emotional, they're gonna be emotional. You're excited, they're gonna be excited. You're in, right? It's assumptive, it's following a lot of the rules that I just talked about. And when you go to give someone a high five or shake their hand, it's kind of considered rude not to give a high five back or rude not to shake someone's hand. And if you do shaking the hand, for instance, what does that signify? That signifies closing a deal, right? And so in a way, if they don't shake your hand back, if they don't enroll, it's almost rude. It's almost considered rude if they don't enroll. So I'm just giving you the psychology here behind this. So you're in, right? A high five. Now, if you're at a one-on-one -on -one situation and you're maybe at Starbucks, it's a little weird. So don't do that if you're doing like a one-on-one, -on -one. <laughs> okay? So if you're sitting down one-on-one -on -one with someone, you're doing a two-on-one, -on -one, something like that. I mean, the presentation's over when you're done. So are you ready to get started? Are you ready to get started? Okay, notice I'm always kind of doing a little nod here. And here's the key. After you've asked this, this is, I'm gonna create a whole new sheet here because of, this is very important. Once you have asked, you wanna do this. This is exactly what you wanna do, is this. Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> See, it takes the average person about eight seconds to process a decision in their mind. Now the average salesperson, which is an amateur, is not gonna allow more than three seconds of silence before they start talking and start reselling. So understand that when you don't allow for that uncomfortable silence, you are literally talking someone out of making a decision. So um, it would work like this. Do you have any questions or are you ready to get started? And you just sit there and wait and you smile and you wait for them to talk. Okay, now another one, and this is all about leadership, is let's get you started, okay? Let's get you started, okay? A lot of times I do this after they've asked um, a couple questions. You know, maybe uh, I've said, are, are you ready to get started? And they say, well, how does this work? And I'll answer that question. And I'll say, do you have any more questions? Or are you ready to get started? And they have another question, and I answer a question. And maybe they have two or three questions. Well, I realize that people need to be led. They have been led their entire life, so when they're Kids, their parents tell them what to do, they're led. When they get into school, their teachers tell them what to do, they're led. When we get jobs, our bosses tell us what to do, they're led. And so our job, if you wanna be a master foreclosure, is to lead. So after they've asked you a few questions, I'm just gonna put my hand out, I'm gonna say, John, let's get you started, okay? Okay, and again, it's just leading. Now, those would be considered, you can consider those kinda of like a one-step close. Now, I'm gonna go through and teach you a two-step close, I've used this a ton. And so when the presentation is over, if it's a video, if it's you know, a live presentation, whatever. So presentation's over, I'm gonna say, awesome, right? What'd you like best? Awesome, right? What'd you like best? And they're gonna tell me. And once they tell me what they like about the program, maybe they like the product, maybe they like the money, whatever they say, I'm gonna sit there and I'm gonna listen to them. And when they're done talking, I'm gonna say this. Step number two is, sounds like you're ready to get started. And again, shut up, you smile and you nod. So that's the two-step close. Now, here's another I use if I'm using a video presentation, uh, if I'm you know, pushing play on a DVD, something like that, this was what I would consider to be a three-step close. So step number one, and when the presentation is over, is I'm gonna ask the same question. Awesome, right? What'd you like best? Okay, step number two. Once they've told me, I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna say, cool, well listen, I've gotta ask you a question to see if you qualify to be successful with this. Do you think you have the ability to push play on a video like I just did with you? <laughs> and I give a big smile. Okay, now what do you think they say every time? Every single time they say yes. They have to say yes because anyone can push play on a video. Step three, 
congratulations, you qualify. Welcome to the team. Let's get you plugged in. I'll show you how to make all your money back in the next week. Cool? So you're putting your hand out and you're shaking their hand. You're leading. The key to being a masterful closer is you leading. Now, these are just a few of the basic closing skills of a professional network marketer. I could go through a lot more, but for now, watch, rewatch this video, start putting some of this into practice. What you ultimately want to get to is the confidence of knowing that you can literally close anyone that's closable. And part of that confidence comes from the topic of tomorrow's lesson, which is overcoming objections. So stay tuned for lesson number five, and I'm gonna give you a framework that I found is the most masterful way of handling just about any objection that's gonna come your way. Now, I'm also a firm believer that to become a millionaire in network marketing, it's all about the numbers. So tomorrow, I'm gonna give you what I found after 20 years in network marketing are the personal production numbers that you have to go through in order to reach the top. I'll see you tomorrow.